Uh, my name is Bradley Wojtek. I'm a professor, assistant professor at UC San Diego in the Department of Cognitive Science. The question is, why should anybody care about theory in neuroscience? And that, that seems, I mean, you could broaden that and say, why should anybody care, care about theory in science, right? And that seems like a very strange question that, well, I understand where you're coming from, but uh, I guess on the one hand, I can make an appeal to somebody much smarter than I am and say, go ahead and read uh, Larry Abbott's Theoretical Neuroscience Rising. <laughs> uh, it's a 2008 neuron paper, which is, is great. It outlines all of this stuff. Uh, but to summarize, I guess my own take on the general, the general view, uh, what is it we're trying to do in general as scientists, right? We could, we could be uh, accumulating all the facts in the world. Uh, and uh, in that Abbott paper, he actually uh, makes an appeal to a quote that's one of my favorites in science in general, which is about Borges, which is about, uh, essentially boils down to the map is not the territory, which is if you're trying to have an understanding of the world in which you live, you can make a map. Uh, and you can make a perfectly detailed map that contains information about where every single little detail of everything is, but then that's not useful anymore. You're not doing any information distillation. It is a perfect representation of the real world. And so what we're trying to do as scientists is try and find generalizable rules. Right? We're trying to figure out ways of uh, it, it distilling all of the complexity of the world around us into more simple sets of rules and equations that can govern the underlying fundamental processes. And that's what we're doing. Right? So we can be collecting data and data and data and talk about brain areas that do X and Y and Z, but that's not really a rule, that's just collecting data. What we want to try and figure out is, is the fact that we see modularity in the brain, is that generalizable across all brains, across all neural processing systems, across any processing system? And so theory allows us to do that. So what kinds of theory would, ex would benefit experimentalists? Uh, so I was, a th I was an experimentalist primarily. Um, and I guess I'll speak to my own needs and why I ended up moving more into theory and computation, which is uh, initially working with patients with unilateral brain lesions. And uh, in my PhD work, I found that lesions to the prefrontal cortex uh, had uh, effects, apparent causal effects, on activity in the visual cortex. Uh, which is great, that's all fine and good, and it tests hypotheses about top-down control during visual attention and memory, but the question is how? Like, why is it that a lesion of the prefrontal cortex is affecting activity in the visual cortex? Okay, well, they're connected, okay. Well, what does that mean? Well, then maybe some sort of information transfer is being disrupted because of the lack of the tissue. Okay, well, what does that mean? How does information transfer occur? What does information transfer mean in terms of the brain? Is information transfer the right framework to be using? And so you go down this rabbit hole of trying to figure out in more detail uh, and so for me, in terms of an experimentalist that moved into theory, uh, it's, it's trying to understand the basic phenomena, the mechanism, the underlying principle of the, question, the experimental question of interest. Right? And you can make an appeal to physics and even something in the news right now of, of uh, the LIGO experiment, right? finding gravitational waves. This is something that was predicted by theory, pure theory, nearly 100 years ago by Einstein. Right? And so the theory can help drive the generation of novel experiment, experimental questions. And so that's what we've been doing in my lab, is using some of the tools of neural simulation and computational modeling to help us try and guide our experiments. And say, okay, look, our models make these predictions. So we can then search for those in, in real data. And if we don't find them, that means either the model is incorrect, the way that we're conceiving of how to model the system is wrong, or, uh, you know, we did the experiment wrong, right? But like, there's still information gained in that, and, and so that's that's what I think the critical add is. The Pape's circuit. Uh, this is like an anatomical theory from 1936. So James Pape, we call it the Pape circuit, right? He noticed that you have this interesting link between memory and uh, emotion you remember things that are mo more emotional, right? And given the constraints of what they understood about neuroanatomy at the time, he said, there must be this circuit of things that are connected in the brain. The amygdala must be communicating with the hippocampus. Uh, and he, he created this hypothetical circuit, which we call the PAPE circuit, which is essentially the limbic system. Uh, uh, but that's just based purely upon, it's hypothetical neuroanatomy, right? It's based upon an experience of what we know psychologically. This has to exist. We should find these connections in the brain. What do we need to bring the theorists and experimentalists together? Okay, well, I guess there's like the, the, the wishful thinking view, and then there's the practical view. And the wishful thinking view uh, would be more along the lines of conferences like this, where the experimentalists can see the value add 
that the uh, computational and theoretical people have. I think the reality is when it comes down to it is uh, money talks and in academia and in science the currency is papers and so if a bunch of theorists uh, combined with experimentalists start writing papers that are really high profile and impactful that's what's going to talk and I think ultimately at the end of the day what's going to get experimentalists and, and computational modeling people together is proof of concept showing that it works and that you can get something good out of it which unfortunately is, is fear a few publications and grants but you know that's, that's the way it works right so